Good morning and uh, welcome here to Cheney Manor this morning. Sorry, it's a little bit late. Um, I'm back on the laptop today, so if anything goes wrong, uh, I'll have to run out and get something else to, to, um, to film this on. Um, I hope you're well this morning. Uh, I hope you're in fine fettle and I hope you get a chance to enjoy the sunshine today. Another gorgeous day today. Um, absolutely gorgeous. And um, um, hopefully uh, you will get a chance to appreciate that today. Uh, just a couple of quick notices. Um, um, yeah, a couple of quick notices. That tomorrow uh, there will be a service at nine o'clock and it will be kind of dead on nine o'clock because I'm going to record something. I've got a funeral at half past nine. And as my son pointed out, probably not going to be enough time for me to finish it half past nine and get to the crematorium by half past nine. So um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to record the service and set it to premiere at nine o'clock. I probably will record it tomorrow morning though. So it will be a Friday morning, morning service. I'm not going to kind of record it straight after this one. Um, what else? I don't think there's really anything else. We'll have all together worship on Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock. So um, that will be something, again, that will be probably, I'm going to film that and that will be kind of a premiere as well. Hopefully that's working um, and hopefully there aren't no technical issues with that. Um, also today apparently is uh, Joan Howe's birthday, I believe. Uh, hopefully I read that message correct. So um, uh, we don't, don't normally do this, but uh, Joan said, <laughs> are only going to hear me? But let's all just let's let's do something happy. Let's sing happy birthday to, to Joan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, so that's especially for Joan. Many uh, happy returns for today. I understand you watch this later. Sounding like a Radio 2 disc jockey. Um, but actually, hopefully you joined in with that. And, and uh, I don't know whether they, I don't know whether people can see the, all the hearts and all the um, emojis that come up when they watch it on YouTube. My fear is they can't, but Joan, just to, if, if you can't, please just imagine uh, the screen almost covered with, um, with thumbs up, love hearts, smiley faces, just to wish you a happy birthday. So, um, so many happy returns. Today, uh, we remember, from, oh, look at the angle right, saints on earth. Today is a day that we remember, no, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, it's a very, very English name, obviously. Uh, Lanfranc, Lanfranc, prior of Lebec, who was Archbishop of Canterbury. I think they, he died in 1089. So Lanfranc was born in Pavia, northern Italy, in about in about 1005. He studied and then practiced law in Pavia before moving to France in 1035, where he became a pupil of Berenger of Tours. He taught in, he taught in Avranche before in 1042. He entered the newly found Benedictine Abbey of Lebec near Rouen. Only three years later, he became its prior and was able to open a school there which rapidly became famous and attracted scholars from many parts of Europe, several of whom rose, later rose to high rank, especially the future Pope, Alexander II, and Anson, who we heard about before, who was to succeed Lanfranc both as prior of Lebec and as Archbishop of Canterbury. While at Lebec, Lanfranc met Duke William of Normandy, and though he initially opposed William's marriage to his cousin Matilda of Flanders, he later withdrew his objections and was reconciled to William. William was clearly aware of Lanfranc's abilities, and when, in 1063, he founded St. Stephen's Abbey at Caen, he appointed Lanfranc as its first abbot. <coughs> Three years later, William invaded England. It is generally supposed that it was Lanfranc who arranged for a papal blessing for the expedition, and after his victory at Hastings, was crowned king. In 1070, Archbishop Digend was deposed and Lanfranc, who had been elected Archbishop of Rouen in 1067, but declined the post, was summoned to England to replace him at, Can at Canterbury. 
William had seen Lanfranc's outstanding administrative skills at Quebec and wanted to make use of them in England. Lanfranc repaid him as an energetic and vigorous archbishop who oversaw the re reform, some would say normalized, normanization of the English church. The changes he instituted, including enforcing clerical, clerical celibacy, too many C's, reforming cathedral chapters, rationalizing the number of dioceses, insisting on the subordination of York to Canterbury, drawing a clear legal and jurisdictional distinction between matters civil and ecclesiastical, rebuilding Canterbury Cathedral and re-establishing a library there after its destruction by fire in 1067. He also supported William's policy of replacing Anglo-Saxon bishops with Normans. During the conqueror's frequent absences in Normandy, Lundfranc generally acted as regent and demonstrated his mil military ability in suppressing a rising against William in 1074. Theologically, he wrote on Paul's epistles and was involved in the debates concerning the nature of the divine presence in the Eucharist. After William's death, Longfront crowned William Rufus. Rufus increasingly disregarded the boundaries between church and state when it was to his political and financial advantage. But before matters could come to a head, Longfront died in 1089. Interesting character to be remembering. Um, there we go. Lanfranc, Prior of Lebec, Archbishop of Canterbury. I think Justin is easier to pronounce. And by the sounds of it, slightly less controversial in some ways. Hopefully you have uh, the liturgy in front of you. Hopefully you're, uh, we will also um, use today's blessings as well, Thursday, Thursday being the day we do blessings. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit on us, and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that was is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Got a bit further than we did first time yesterday. Our psalm today is Psalm 24. Psalm 24. 
the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who can rise up to his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from God, from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. O Lord of hosts, purify our hearts, that the King of glory may come in, your Son, Jesus, our Redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now have the Song of Ezekiel, and like everything, you, um, please do feel free to join in, to listen, to, to do parts of it, to, to respond, however you see fit. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. We have this reading from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 26. Luke chapter 8, verse 26. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out onto the land, a man of the city who had demons met him. <clears throat> For a long time he had worn no clothes and did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and driven, and driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the mountain and entered the swine and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds heard what happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out and saw what happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, 
clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boats and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be able to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A remarkable and wonderful account of that man who was possessed and that man who was um, overtaken by demons, but how Jesus uh, got rid of them, how Jesus um, cured him. So much so that he wanted to follow him, even when others were pushing Jesus away. I love that last bit where, where Jesus turns to mind and says, return to your home, go home. I declare how much God has done for you. Now we can see Jesus as God. We know that. But it's interesting how Luke declares this. Because it says, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So the man went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. He saw this man possessed, transformed, saw the divinity in Jesus. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. now have the benedictus christ has gone up on high and has led captivity captive hallelujah blessed be the lord the god of israel who has come to his people and set them free he has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant david through his holy prophets god promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Christ has gone up on high. Activity. Now we're going to come to our blessings, uh, which we pray every um, Thursday. You might like to, just in a moment of quiet, lift before God those who are on your hearts, those whom you wish to bring before God.
those whom you wish to be particularly touched by these blessings. Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the authority Jesus delegated to us, and in his name, we speak to every household within our parishes. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your marriages and relationships, that they may be strong and whole. We bless the relationship between each partner, that it may be loving, forgiving, merciful and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household, especially at this time of confinement, at this time of heightened stress. We pray that within each household, love and understanding between each one. In Jesus' name, we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship, especially when those friendships are stretched at the moment through the lack of contact. We bless your health, that you may be strong and well. In Jesus' name, we resist any sickness or disease, disease which seeks to invade and overtake these communities. And to every person we say, be well, be strong, be healthy. To any who are sick right now, we say we bless you in Jesus' name for a speedy recovery. And we especially bring to mind this day, Mary Cooper, recovering in hospital. We also bring before you young William Lord in hospital in Oxford. And we pray for the skill of the doctors and nurses looking after those that are unwell. And we pray for the families who are, who are so anxious at this time. We pray for full recoveries, Lord. We pray your blessings on those families and all those who are on our hearts and on our minds this day. We bless those who are in the autumn of their lives, those who live and work in residential care, that they may have peace, they may know the peace and presence of God in their hearts. And in Jesus' name we pray that they will have assurance and hope for the future. We speak blessings of patience, wisdom, protection and love to all carers and associated staff. We bless the wealth of every person in our communities that they may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. We bless the work of your hands whatever you turn your hand to which is wholesome may be profitable we bless every wholesome enterprise that is conducted by you that it may prosper and be successful and to any who are anxious right now because of financial constraints or financial demands we pray lord i pray your, your blessing on those families they will find their daily bread and have enough to live and enough to give. In Jesus' name, we bless the businesses operating within our bounds, that they will flourish and employer-employee relationships will be wholesome, fair and full of integrity. We bless our local preschools and schools that they may be secure and safe for teachers and pupils alike. And we especially pray for all staff and children and parents as they're preparing some kind of 
have returned to school. We give you thanks for those that have been working throughout this lockdown, looking after key workers, children. But as things start to kind of scale up, we pray for your protection on all those that will be going into school. And we pray for wisdom for those making decisions. We bless the children's capacity to learn and to continue to develop relationships. We bless the governors and all the staff that they will know that they can trust and flourish if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. We pray your blessing on all contact the church has with them in Jesus' name. We bless the local doctors, nurses, pharmacists, district nurses, carers, all staff of Sun Double Court, all health care workers, all carers, all people that go into people's homes. We pray for them as they minister to people that they may have wisdom, guidance, gentleness, protection and understanding for their patients at this most challenging of times. And we pray for the as they operate within our bounds, that they will be blessed with safety, protection and wisdom. We thank you for their hard work. We thank you for their integrity. We thank you for the fact that they will run into danger when we or when we run in the opposite direction. Bless those working within those services. And we especially pray for the police and fire stations in our parish. We pray for local parish and borough councils. And we pray that they will be got, they'll be blessed as they serve their communities and then they to seek the best for them and look towards the future with wisdom and we pray for our national government as it makes difficult decisions we pray lord that it will be clothed with righteousness justice and integrity and whilst there is a lot of nonsense that is going on from all sides nonsense being said a lot of anger we pray dear father that uh, things will return to With justice and righteousness, we will return to in the situation at hand. And we pray for our nation at this time of peril, challenge and danger. And we speak to all Christians in our communities and say, we bless you in the name of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit and the word of God will flow out from you in power. We bless the hearts of all who live here, that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all those who live and work here, that the overspill of blessings and the presence of the kingdom of God may fall upon you. Collect for today. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made of uh, being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.
thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining me today. It is a great privilege uh, to be able to do this. I do hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're safe and sound. Um, and I hope you stay safe and sound. And if you're not, I hope you find safety and comfort. I was going to say soundness, but I'm not quite sure that's a word. Um, but I do hope things, um, I do hope and pray things will be well. Let's share the uh, church prayer. The Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to each other and our communities, the ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day and uh, see you soon. God bless.